13 minutes past two now and today is the International Day of Women and Girls in Science, a chance to celebrate all the amazing females who work and contribute to the major scientific findings that we see every day. But it's also a day uh, designed to encourage more girls and women to take up jobs in the fields of science, technology, engineering and maths. Well, according to UIS data, uh, less than 30% of the world's researchers are women. Well, joining us now is a local champion of this course, uh, Dr Jessica Spurrell, who works at Southampton University as the school's university partnerships officer. Uh, Jessica, thank you ever so much for coming on to the programme this afternoon. Afternoon to you. Uh, tell me more about why you think there is still such a, a low intake then of women in science compared to other subjects. Thanks so much for having me. And it's so great to be able to champion this cause. As you say, it's so important. Um, it's a really difficult question. I think it's a really complex question and to try and reduce it down too much. Um, it's one of the reasons why it hasn't been been solved in a long time. But um, I think part of it is is the fact that it's always been perceived that these subjects are, um, are more are things that men would study or work in, um, which actually isn't true. So part of a lot of the work that we do working with local schools um, and our researchers at the university and a lot of other people do is trying to change that perception and show that there have been women um, making scientific breaks since, since science has began. There have been women doing science um, so I think that's really important as we change that perception. And it is changing, isn't it? I mean, we've been talking about this annual International Day of Women and Girls in Science for uh, many years now since it, it was launched. And it is one of those things where every year the statistics get a little bit higher in terms of females going into to these roles. So, it, I mean, is this just to be expected? Things will change, but it's going to be gradual. I mean, things are changing, as you say, and they are changing for the better. But I think if we want to make drastic change, we have to work harder at it. And part of that is, um, I mean, there's a lot of work that goes in into encouraging, encouraging young women and girls to consider science in the first place. But a lot more work needs to be done about changing the culture of science um, as well, so that it's a much more welcoming and inclusive environment. So that once, once we recruit all these incredibly inspiring and um, passionate and creative young women, that they stay with science and that they can have a, a fulfilling and successful and satisfying career in it as well. So everybody has a role to play then in making it more inclusive. How do you achieve that? How do you make it more inclusive uh, an environment? Uh, lots of different things. Um, so there's lots of different initiatives that can um, be done in workplaces to make them more inclusive for everyone. I think that's something that's really important is once you start thinking about groups that are underrepresented, such as women or, or have been historically had, had prejudice against them um, and you start changing the environment to suit them then everyone benefits um, so uh, lots of different things uh, I, I don't want to go to the obvious straight away but it's the first one that comes to my mind there's a lot of women who are primary caregivers in a, in a household yeah. whether it's for young children or elderly relatives or, or anyone in between and so having flexible working hours um, and understanding that uh, is really important to make environments more inclusive um, but also thinking about uh, everyone thinking about their own unconscious bias um, and how they approach people um, and approaching people with respect and understanding and empathy and that's something that um, so we've had an event today called Dragonfly Day um, where we had a panel discussion with um, women from all different stages of engineering so from professors and PhD students and undergraduate students to a, an amazing local student um, who studied at, uh, at Cantel and then Richard Taunton um, and just listening to them speak and, and hearing the changes they want to make is so inspiring and I think once you, once you hear them and what they want to do with the world and, and make it a better place and you're like, yep, we need to do everything in our power to make sure that, that these guys get a chance to have a voice and to, um, to go ahead and, and make their dreams come true. Um, and what difference does today make as well? Why is uh, International Day of Women and Girls in Science important? I think, again, it's that, that, you know, it's one of those celebration days that we hope in the future we won't need because they're just, it will just be the norm that there are women and girls in science as the norm and they are celebrated for their achievements in those areas as the norm, as uh, their male colleagues are generally. But we're not there yet. And so we have to acknowledge that there is a gap. Um, and, and in order to and part of the process of closing that gap is to, to raise the voice of people who haven't had voices before. So in this case, it's about women and girls in science, but there's lots of other similar causes. Um, so it's really important to make sure, as we said, that these these voices are heard and also that this this image of what a scientist is changes so mm. that those young girls can look ahead and say, do you know what? That could be me one day. I could do that. What got you interested in the field? Uh, so my background's actually in engineering. That's what I studied at university. Mm -hmm. I did um, 
an undergraduate degree and a PhD, both at Southampton. I've been here a long, long, long time. <laughs> Good on you. Um, and uh, yeah, was was one of a few women in the field. And so you do just sort of naturally find yourself fighting your corner, I guess, and, yeah. and having to shout louder and show that, you know, we are here and we've always been here, as I say, since, since science and engineering have been things. There have been women doing them and doing them amazingly. Um, and we just need to keep reminding people of that fact. But um, it's also the event today, again, was so lovely because it shows that um, oh, it's such a, an amazing group of people. I think once you've had to face challenges in life, whatever they are, and you've, you've been in a minority or underrepresented or not had that voice, when you find people in a similar position to you, it's so uplifting because everyone is, you know, you're all there for each other and you're all sharing and encouraging each other. So as well as feeling, you know, passionately about the cause, it's also just women women working in STEM, even though I'm not a scientist anymore, but that, that community of women working in those areas is so loving and um, just a, a beautiful thing to be a part mm. of. So I guess well, you're flying the flag. You're flying the flag well, um, Jessica, <laughs> and it's been lovely to talk to you. And if you inspire just one uh, young person listening now to go into this field, then you've done a brilliant job. Thank you so much uh, for coming on to the show this afternoon, Dr. Jessica Sparrell, uh, who's at Southampton University as the Schools University Partnerships Officer on today, International Day of Women and Girls in Science.